While recording my last video about AV1 streaming support on YouTube, I had this idea to put two GPU in the same PC. Why doing that? Well, we know that AV1 codec is the future of encoding video on internet, and as a content creator, you will have to get into it. Problem is that only the latest generation of graphic cards support encoding in AV1. Let's face it, those cards are super expensive, and your actual card certainly does not need to be replaced. What if you could just buy an Intel Arc A380 at 130 US dollars and use it in your main rig instead of using a dual PC setup for streaming? Hey, I'm Air Max. Let's start with a little bit of context. On one hand, you have huge improvement happening in the world of content creation, and especially with streaming video content. Yeah, I'm talking about AV1. OBS just launched a beta version that supports AV1 streaming last week, and YouTube is now supporting AV1 as a stream intake in their server. You can now stream 1414p at 60 FPS at 12,000 kilobit per second with an amazing video quality. Amazing. AV1 is growing in popularity by the day, and my guess is that big streaming platforms like Twitch are going to adopt it really soon. From a content creator standpoint, AV1 will be required if you want to satisfy your audience by bringing extra accessibility and quality value to your content. On the other hand, the same content creator always have been struggling for creating live stream content without impacting the performance of their gameplay. So far, there is really like two ways of solving this matter. Solution one is using a single PC with a single card. The issue with this setup is that depending on the power of your main GPU, you might lose from 5 to 30% of performance in terms of FPS. Also, adding a lot of stuttering while gaming because the card has to handle the game plus the encoding. If your GPU hits the 100% usage, you are toast. So the solution number two is the one that most of the full-time creators like myself had to invest into a dual PC setup to transfer the encoding load on a second PC. With this setup come a lot of drawbacks. The cost of the material, like here, here, I'm, I'm talking about a full PC, a capture card to transfer the video stream, but also a sound mixer to transfer the audio. And the second one is the complexity of setting everything up, which can be a real nightmare. In this video, I will share my experience about a third approach, which was totally impossible to execute two or three years ago. Eposvox, who is a reference when it comes to learn about streaming and video encoding, made a solid video in which he explained why it was not a good idea at the time. So, will it work now? Let's find out! For testing, I had to remove my RTX 1490 from my main PC and replace it with my lovely old 1080 Ti and the brand new Intel Arc A380. The process went really smooth, and as you can see, both of the cards fit in my case. Also, to make sure the results I will share with you were consistent and not altered by any previous settings on my current rig, I did a fresh install of Windows 10, version 22H2, on a separate SSD. My current rig is a 5950X running on an Asus Crosshair 8 Dark Hero with 32GB 32 32 of Samsung BDI RAM. The CPU is overclocked by PBO and a little undervolt, and for the memory I tuned it at 3600MHz with low timing. I had never run two GPU on my main desktop machine, so I had to learn on the go. First thing I noticed is that my Intel Arc was defined as my main GPU and so, while starting the PC, I had a black screen, no access to the BIOS anymore. Somehow, my motherboard recognized my Intel Arc as a main GPU, and because all my screens are connected to my NVIDIA GPU, I could not see anything until I booted to the Windows 10 login page. Switching the card did not help at all, so if you want to try this streaming setup, make sure you set up everything in Windows while having only one gaming card 
then put the encoding card after. You won't have any video signal until the end of the boot. If you need to get access to the BIOS, switch your video cable from the gaming card to the encoding card. It, it, it might, it, it's gonna work. For OBS, I downloaded the latest beta version, OBS Studio 29.1 Beta 3, and installed it in portable mode. After the first launch, I noticed my Intel card was not recognized. After reading some feedback on the issue page of GitHub, I found out that I was not the only one to encounter this issue on the latest OBS beta and discover a temporary fix. I downloaded the exe file and copied it in the right folder. So I will put a link in the description below just in case the OBS team did not fix the issue uh, while you are watching this video. I did set up OBS for streaming on YouTube using the Intel Arc 380 and launched Apex Legend to do some tests. Well, the game ran pretty good, but OBS was having rendering lag spikes like I've never experienced before. At this point, I really felt I was done with the whole adventure. But you know me, I don't give up easily. And you know what I'm not giving up on this channel too? So one of my goals is to reach 10,000 subs. That's why I'm asking you to like this video, subscribe and even support me directly by becoming a member of this channel or a Patreon member. Links are below, please don't forget to help. Without your support, there will be no video at all. Thanks. So one of the things I tried was to launch OBS as administrator. And surprise, it worked. I was finally playing on my NVIDIA 1080 Ti and encoding and recording in AV1 with my Intel Arc on the same PC. Now let's talk about the administrator privilege. I'm not a big fan of launching app as administrator for security reasons. So I tried to understand what could make OBS stutter that much. And because it was a rendering lag, I assume it was linked to the resources allocation within Windows. So what could help OBS to allocate enough resources and set its priority high enough to avoid stuttering? Well, I activated game mode and make sure the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling was on in Windows settings. I rebooted the machine and bingo, <laughs> no need to launch OBS in administrator mode anymore. Thank you, Microsoft. OBS is set up. Let's see the performance impact on the game. I'm using a base canvas of 1440p in OBS without any downscaling. I'm playing the game at 1080p because this 1080 Ti struggle to run at 1440p at the type of FPS I'm aiming to. I want to have at least like 160, 200 FPS. So the way I got the number here is pretty simple. I launched Apex Legend, reached the fire range, and found a specific spot to look at. I then look at the FPS in four different situations. First, by just running the game without OBS. Second, by running the game with OBS on and not streaming or recording at all. Third, by launching OBS and recording with a gaming card. And fourth, by launching OBS, recording with a transcoding card. Okay, you, you, you get it? Okay, let's get there. First learning is that launching OBS itself hits the FPS even without encoding. You lose between 5 to 10% of the FPS no matter what. In this case, you lose 6.7%, which is around 13 FPS, my case. For your information, I'm using game capture, and my OBS setup is not bloated at all. It's just part of the capture process. Now, what is really interesting is the fact that after starting to stream, no matter what card you use to transcode, the FPS only decreased by 1%. The second learning is the difference between encoding from one card to another is negligible in this scenario. To prove the second learning was still accurate in a scenario where the gaming GPU load will be maxed out, I did a stream for about 3 hours. During the stream, the gaming card reached 100% usage many times and no stutter or lag were encountered whether in the stream or on my screen, which was really neat. So overall, it's a win. By adding a second card in the PC to transcode, you give more headroom to your main gaming card to process the graphics, 
you lose only between like 5 to 10% FPS because OBS capture. And you unlock as many encoding power the second graphic card can handle. With an Intel, you can easily transcode two streams in two different codecs. One in AV1, for example, and the second in HEVC. Without a sweat. So there is still some important point to take in consideration. If you are going this route, you need to understand what type of bottleneck you could encounter. First, you need to make sure you have enough PCIe lane to allow enough bandwidth for the graphic card to work properly. I invite you to check the manual of your motherboard and understand on which slots you need to plug your second graphic card. A good tool to use to check the speed of your bus interface is GPU-Z. Here, you can see my graphic card are running at 8 times by 3.0 and 8 times by 4.0, which is plenty enough. If you don't have enough bandwidth available, this dual GPU setup won't work because the video stream has to go through the motherboard interface to reach the encoding card. Be really aware of that. The second important point is the power supply capacity. I use the Corsair AX1600i. It's 1600 watts in this video. You don't need this type of monster, but make sure your power supply has enough room to support two GPU. The third point is that your case might be a limitation to install the second card. Double check you have enough space available before spending money on an extra card. The last point is the airflow. Cooling down two cards require more airflow than cooling one card. Logic. But think about it, as you could burn one of the cards if those does not breathe properly. So I streamed this morning during three hours with a dual GPU setup. If you want to give it a look, I will drop a link below. I was able to game on the 1080 Ti and encode an AV1 stream for YouTube and a lossless recording in HEVC at the same time. I can't believe I did not have this ID earlier. I understand that running a 1490 RTX is a way to go nowadays to create live content. This GPU is just insane. But what if you don't have the budget for one, or you're stuck with a before last generation which gives you a lot of performance to play but not enough to stream or encode in AV1 at the same time? Well, this solution is a game changer. By buying this Intel Arc A380 and putting it inside your main PC, you can test for yourself. If it works like it did for me, you could get rid of your second like, streaming PC if you have one. Benefiting from the sale of all this hardware, minimizing the complexity of your setup, and reducing your overall electricity bill. I'm, I'm just saying. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comment below how it worked for you. I'm really curious to hear from your experience. If you want to see my Intel Arc adventure, I advise you to watch my previous video. Also, check my channel for a fourth way to stream and multi-stream by hosting your own RTMP server at home. Yeah, 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 yeah. And stop making fun of my mic. Okay, my, my mic is the best. Bisous, bisous.